This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As we turn to a shocking new report that estimates 35,000 people have been killed by law enforcement in the U.S. since the year 2000, and that the number of brown and black people killed by police may be more than double the amount widely reported. The RASA database project was founded by the late Roberto Rodriguez, also known as Dr. Sintli, who died in July. Rodriguez was associate professor of Mexican-American studies at the University of Arizona, who himself survived a brutal police assault in 1979, when Los Angeles sheriff deputies beat him for taking pictures of them beating another man. He spent the rest of his life fighting police brutality and writing about Chicano culture. In 2021, he joined Democracy Now! to discuss how preliminary findings of the RASA database project's report show deaths of Latinx and indigenous people at the hands of police were undercounted by a quarter to one-third in national databases and were virtually ignored by the media. One of the things that we, we asked ourselves as a group should we count all deaths, you know, in custody, et cetera? And everybody said yes. And now, personally, I wanted just the ones that are unjustified. But how do you get, how do you determine what's unjustified when you don't have a judicial system that works? You know, it's, it's like a hundred, I would say 99.9% impunity, both in the killings that we examine and also the border patrol. You know, you can count in one hand with a, a finger or two to spare of police officers that are doing hard time, say 30, 40, 50 years to life. You know, I doubt there's even five. Uh, I, personally, I think that's the actual solution. Until you see that, you're not going to see anything. No reform is going to fix anything, because all the, all the cop has to say is, I feared for my life, you know? And that absolves everything. The late Professor Roberto Sintli Rodriguez, fondly referred to as Dr. Sintli. For more on the formal release of the RASA data project, database project, we're joined by its project manager, um, Yvette Sochiot Boizo, a mental health patient and civil and human rights advocate, and Jesus Garcia, demographer, uh, statistician on the project. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, Jesus, let's begin with you. Explain what you found. Yes, Amy Juan, thank you very much for this opportunity to, to be here with you. So, uh, Roberto asked me to participate in this project on a volunteer basis, and uh, he more or less, as you heard, knew what the subject matter was, but he wasn't able to, you know, articulate the statistics. And so, over the past two years, I've been looking at uh, data from open source information, um, and what I, the results are that uh, the Latino population or people killed, um, Spanish surname, um, is at about 6,500 6, uh, between the year 2000 and uh, 2022. That's um, an over 2,000 increase from what some estimates say at about 40, 4,500. Um, equally important here is the Asian population count. The Asian population count has gone from just about under 500, under old methodologies, to over 2,000 deaths, a 75% increase. So our goal with this project was to not only address um, the, uh, the, the missing information for Latinos, but overall, and see the impact on all our communities of color, all our disenfranchised people. And, and uh, to tell you the truth, this has been a very difficult project to work on, uh, personally. Um, this is not my forte, but uh, Roberto asked me to participate in this project, and, and I think the results are uh, pretty groundbreaking, and they're the beginning, not the end, of uh, this further discussions on this project. Decision. And Jesus Garcia, I wanted to ask you, in terms of the increases in numbers, uh, could you talk about what were the the weaknesses of the uh, previous counts, such as, for instance, the Washington Post's a big study that they did about police deaths? You found that there were a significant number of people who were listed as uh, with no racial identity initially or as other, and that you were able to track down more clearly uh, their uh, ethnic or, or racial uh, uh, origin. Uh, uh, talk about that process. Yes, absolutely. So first of all, there is no 
federal standard for collection of this information. There's no federal department at the Department of Justice or a Center for Disease Control or the like. So the task of collecting data as it is has fallen on these open sources and, and in fact on individuals. So I'm talking about Fatal Encounters website, uh, Mapping Police Violence, and obviously you've mentioned the uh, Washington Post and, and the Guardian and others. But in the collection of this information, um, it's compiled by basically independent people. And I think this is a, a very good reason for having good independent media. Be without a federal collection, independent media, independent sources are the ones that have compiled a list. So when you're doing these sorts of crowdsources information, there's gonna be gaps. And uh, a big gap are things like um, the race ethnicity of an individual. In many cases, there are no names, the location. And so there's a host of issues with the data. And so what I was able to do was to merge these different data sets into one. And then uh, having worked at the US Census Bureau and because of my background, I was able to then try to assign uh, missing race and Hispanic race and ethnicity based on the U.S. Census Bureau's 160,000 surname list. And so, uh, as I mentioned, it's taken two years to get to this point, but it's because of uh, independent sources. I also need to thank the Cal State University and the technology tools. These things are not easy to do. It takes specialized skills, and we just have been able to, to assemble a team of people and technologies to get us to this point. So uh, the data, I feel, are fairly accurate. Um, there's, as I mentioned, there's much more to do, but I, I stand by the counts that we have. And so it's, uh, again, they're terrible, terrible numbers to look at, but I think like anything else, it's a beginning of hopefully the healing of this very difficult uh, time in our, in our country here. I, I wanted and to bring- in terms, uh, Yeah, I just wanted to ask Jesus Garcia, you also found a, a, a significant increase in the number of whites killed by police, didn't you, in your, in your study? Yes, uh, the initial data um, of over 33,000 deaths included over 9,000 unknown or other. And so again, it, it, and, and included in that count was uh, white ethnicity at about 11,300. Uh, over the course of the new results, I was able to supplement that count by, over, by nearly 5,000. Uh, individuals. So the current count of people classified as white, non-Hispanic, is, is over 16,000 people. They comprise 50% uh, of the deaths. Uh, one, one thing that I have to note among the African-American population is African-Americans in the population represent about 12% of the U.S. population, they are, however, 24 percent or a quarter of all of that. So no matter what you may think out there politically, the data are clear that there is something happening that is greatly impacting our African-American community. And, you know, the results are stark and bare. So, yes, the white count did increase, but so did all the other uh, counts for race, ethnicity. I wanted to bring Sushiot into this conversation, Yvette Boizo, the project manager for the LASA database project. Um, two things. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, and the significance of Roberto Rodriguez and all of his work. So sorry that we weren't also speaking to him today, uh, um, uh, since he was going to bring us the final report, but he—we uh, lost him in the last years. Um, his significance, his imprint on this, but also, in particular, Yvette Boizo, if you could talk about the sexual violence against particularly migrant women. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I think uh, the, the report itself, the research that we've done, is groundbreaking. It's revolutionary in itself. Unfortunately, it's only given police brutality that we can actually prove. And one of the only type, types of violences that we have uh, data for. We don't have a natural account or any type of data when it comes to the violence against women, and, and especially when it comes to migrants, which is even more alarming because, as you know, uh, there's forced sterilizations within the detention centers. Uh, women that have been forcefully sterilized as part of their probation terms in this country. 
So when we look at the people being affected mostly by this type of genocidal practices, it's women of color. So if if you ask me, the, under international law, these are crimes against humanity. This is a genocide. And it's so unfortunate that there's not any type of actual collection of information against these types of violences and crimes against humanity. And could you, what was most surprising to you as you were compiling the data uh, and, uh, and getting a final report? I think, um, unfortunately, there was not much of a surprise. I think within our communities, the indigenous community, the migrant community, the undocumented community, any community of color, this is just a mere reflection of the truth that we have known for a long time. We know that violence has existed from the conception of this country, and it just continues to evolve and take a different name and role. I think what's the most disturbing out of all of this, it's the impunity rate and how the judicial system has been set in place to hold people accountable and that people are supposed to be innocent and to proven guilty. And yet we see people that have a weapon and a badge and they determine who lives and dies basically under their discretion with no proper training, with no adequate tools and this is affecting thousands and thousands of people in the United States. So, Shio, I, we, we have to um, end here, but we're going to conduct this interview in Spanish as well, and we'll post it at democracynow.org. Yvette Boizo, project manager for La Raza Database Project, and Jesus Garcia, demographer and statistician on the project. That does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.